Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevTactic, back with a new tutorial on how to build an Ionic app with offline support. So don't watch the slides here, I'm sorry for that. And also this is the second take of this video. So I made some changes uh, on how we uh, go through the code, so let me know in the end uh, what you think about this. Um, the app we will build um, will cache our API requests. So we will have information even if the user is offline. And also when the user is offline, we can still make requests uh, and store them inside um, our local storage. And once we're back online, we will send them out one by one. So really interesting stuff if you're interested in having an offline mode within your app. So let's get started. I've created my app using this command and today we will go through the code um, just how it is. Um, it has a lot of code involved and uh, some tricky uh, things. So you can find all the code below in the written tutorial, of course, so you can copy and bring them to your own app. Uh, and also this makes the video a bit shorter. So the last one I recorded was about 30 minutes and then the app crashed. So I will try to make it a bit shorter and let me know what you think. Um, so what you need is three more services. Um, this is the general API service that you might already have in your app. Um, this network service will watch for network changes, so on connect on disconnect events, and our offline manager will then uh, store the requests made to the local storage. You will see how it works in a second. Of course, you need to install the according Ionic native packages, so Ionic storage and network. And finally, make sure to add the Cordova plugins as well. So once you get all of this in place, head over to your app module file uh, and make sure that you add the HTTP client module and the Ionic storage module uh, right here and also the network package from NGX. So we've installed the beta version of this, uh, currently using Ionic 4 beta 13, I think. So import it with the NGX at the end and then add it to your array of providers. So first of all, the network service is a pretty easy service that uh, I got basically from uh, the Ionic community. Um, so what we do is use the on disconnect and on connect events of the network package and then update our local um, status behavior subject. So behavior subject, it is initialized with a value and you can always subscribe to it as an observable like we do right here or you can also get the current value of this observable. So, and I need a bit more coffee because it's already the second version of this video. All right, the update network status function that is called once the network changes will display a little toast message. So we will see it inside our app uh, once the network changes. Uh, and finally, in the beginning, we wait until the platform is ready to set our initial status and emit the new value by calling next, or I think you could also call emit. No, actually, I think currently next is still perfectly valid. So this is a very general network service that you could use in all your apps if you need some type of information about the current network status. So let's head over to our offline manager. This one is a bit um, more tricky. So what we want to do is let's say the user is offline and makes a post or a put request to change some data. Now you want to keep track of this request and we do this by simply storing the request with all information. So the request has a URL, um, it has a type, post, put, get, patch, whatever. Um, it has a JSON body most of the time. And then we also add some more information to the storage object just so we can retrieve it a bit easier later. And with this object, uh, we get the current stored uh, operations inside our storage. Um, and this is just to unwrap the array, um, push the new object to the array or set the new array and then store it back to the uh, storage. So this function again, uh, creates a new stored request object that we've defined up here, the little interface, and then store it. Once we um, get back to an internet connection, uh, we will call this check for events function, uh, which uses quite a few operators. So 
Um, if you want more information on those RxJS operators like from, switch web, finalize, of whatever we use, uh, let me know below this video and I'll happily create something for you, definitely. So what we're gonna do is um, we get the information from the storage and by wrapping it inside the from, we basically make uh, a promise to an observable. So then we can use pipe again, um, switch map switches the return value to a new uh, observable. And in our case, um, we check if we have some action stored and then we send them out uh, one by one. And once this is done, we will also display a little toast and finally remove all the information from the storage. Um, of course, you can also have this removal somewhere else. Um, so on each request that is finished, um, you remove the according object from the array. Um, but I wanted to keep things a bit more simple in here. So we will just assume once this finalize is called, we can remove everything. Uh, if we don't have anything stored, we simply remove uh, return a new observable by using off. And now let's check out what happens if we send out the request. Uh, we go through all the stored requests that we got from the storage. Uh, we will make an observable from each of them and push it to the array. And we use HTTP.request, which is the general function. Um, so normally we use get or post or uh, put or whatever. But if you use it like this, come on, uh, you can simply pass the type as the first value in here. So this is now post, put, get, patch, whatever then the URL, then the data, and then you got the perfect HTTP request. And by calling fork join on our array of observables, this function will return once all observables are finished, which means all the stored requests are fired back to the server. Okay, so that's the offline manager service. Storing a request uh, at some point, so you can call this function uh, whenever you need to, um, sending out an array of requests, or you could also have uh, to send out just one request and then remove it from the storage. And finally, this check for events, if there's something actually stored or cached that needs to be sent. So both the network service and the offline manager are built so that you can use it inside your own projects um, without any problems, projects without problems. That's what I want to say. Because uh, they don't have any real big dependencies, just the HTTP client and standard stuff. You could even remove the toast controller from both of them. Uh, and then you could use them inside your own project. And now we will see how to use this um, by going to the API service, uh, where we actually make requests to some dummy API that returns data, but we're not really changing any data in here. Um, so this is the service you normally have to make your HTTP request against your server. And you will have something like get users, get this, get that, get items, whatever. And in here, um, we first of all start by checking if we're currently offline. And this is just an addition uh, for the force refresh um, that we will see inside the view later. But the most important thing is to check if we're offline and then simply returning local data and the local data is written to the storage after we get some data from the API. And here we simply return. So you just have to manage the keys and you could basically have um, many different um, keys for different return values of your API. So it could work completely offline once the user uh, gets the data one time. So um, maybe we should take a look at the online block, which is this. In here, um, this is just to get a random page, nothing you have to worry about. Um, we make a get request to the API. Uh, we need to map the data because it's wrapped a bit. And then um, we tap into the results so we don't change it. We just want to set it to the local user's key so we can later retrieve it if we're offline. So from wraps the or transforms this promise, which we get from the local storage to an observable. So therefore the get users will always return a nice observable with data. And also the actual page um, has no problems uh, with checking the connectivity. All of this is done here. The page will just get back data. Now the update user function um, is just an example for a function that 
your users call that changes data on the server and that needs to be called later. Um, of course, this is tricky because if you just store it um, and act like it was successful, um, this might be the wrong behavior for your app. So in that case, you would also have to perform the action locally that normally your server would do. Um, so again, you might need to find out in which situations this could work. But again, check if we're offline and then don't try to make the request. Simply store the request inside our offline manager and return the observable. And only when we are online, uh, we can make the real put request to the server and perhaps even catch an error and then store it back to our uh, offline manager. But again, um, this shouldn't be the general behavior because uh, an error for a request doesn't really indicate that we're offline or that we should store it and retry it. So perhaps you have some status code inside your error or you check for a specific code and only then store the request. All right. That's it for the API service. And the interesting thing is now that once we go to the homepage to load data, we actually have no problem with the API connection online, offline at all. So we just say, get users, subscribe, and then we set our users. At this point, it doesn't really matter if we're online or offline. Uh, we know that the function will return data and we've just added a little refresher. So we will have a pull to refresh inside the app. Also, if we want to make an update, in our case, simply call the update user function, subscribe, uh, and nothing else will happen. Um, so as you can see, a really super simple view um, page. And then here we got the ion refresher, which calls load data, and the ng4, which goes over uh, our users. All right, so that's the code. Um, I hope it was still um, a nice watch for you because uh, we went through it quite fast, but so the video is shorter and now we have some time to show how this looks on a device. All right, so here's the simple app on my iOS device and right now I'm online, so I can use pull to refresh and uh, sometimes I will get some new data and you see uh, returns real life API data. Um, if I click on something, actually nothing happens because we haven't uh, added any locks, but the update will just run against the API, um, no big deal. So let's change this now to airplane mode. So we see you're now offline, which means our network service works and we also see we are offline here. Let's refresh now and we see we actually return local data. So we could refresh however, um, how often we want and we would always get the same local data back. Now let's click on something and we see your data is stored because you seem to be offline. So now we have stored this request information with the URL, the type, little time and ID and the actual body we wanted to send. And we could do this uh, a few more times uh, with the different users and all of those requests are now stored locally. So let's see what happens if I turn off my airplane mode. So we're back online and we see we are online. We are online, run check for events. We make all the requests to the API one by one. And then you might have seen a little toast indicating uh, that all of the requests were sent. And now a refresh here will bring us new data. All right, so uh, that's how to implement a little offline mode or caching for your Ionic 4 application. I know there are some packages, but some of them are not yet working with Ionic 4 um, or some are a bit tricky to integrate. So with this approach, you can basically build your own caching system and only cache really what you want and have the full control over the data cached and offline available inside your app. If you enjoyed this type of tutorial, which is not really live coding, but uh, going a bit more through the code I have previously written, let me know below. Um, it's actually a bit easier for me and perhaps I can even transport more information to you. So let me know. Also, uh, if you're interested in some RxJS topics, then I'll discuss them in a video pretty soon. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel below this video and also check out the ionicacademy.com uh, where we drink a lot of coffee and learn Ionic together in a friendly environment. So I'd love to see you inside. Have a great day and take care.